All right, it's the end of a long day. I just passed these people. Uh, there's a dude walking on the one side and there's a chick on the gravel or on the uh, side of the road driving slow, yelling across. And I just wanted to stop and help them, but I can't for a multitude of reasons. But I wanna share something with you that I learned this last weekend. <laughs> so I'm an expert at this. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Listen, it's been a day. <sighs> Okay, so they say, and I, I can find it, I will link it here. Uh, they say that it takes, oh wait, okay, so when you're in a marriage, there are impossible moments. There are just impossible moments where nobody, <laughs> first of all, neither of you is Jesus, so you just have to both be human, and if you're both being full on stupid human at the same time, then it's an impossible situation to be in. So, first of all, know that to get from your reactive emotional brain to your logical calm brain takes a minimum of six seconds. So, somebody says something, you want to take it however you want to take it, take a deep breath first. And then they also said in a marriage, what generally happens is one spouse feels alone or whatever version of alone you want to use. Use all your thesauruses, synonyms, synonyms, use all your synonyms that mean alone. And generally speaking, we don't say, I feel alone. We say, you're never there for me, or some version of that. And the other person who loves you very, or loves them very much is worried that they're a disappointment or you know they feel terrible that their loved one feels that way and then they feel defensive <laughs> so then they spout back something and then if you don't take your six damn seconds you're gonna spout back and you're just gonna go back and forth and back and forth and it's just gonna spiral into ridiculousness now I'll see if I can find that. The other thing we do, I love how God works, right? We do Charlotte Mason, which is a philosophy of education. You can public school your kids, just treat them like they're people, you know? So anyway, um, she writes the home, the home educator series. It's a six book, it's a six book series. And then the very first book, they talk about setting habits. Oops. And then they also talk about being accurate in your speech. But she's talking about it when she's dealing with like lying. So we thought, when we were going over this, we thought that that was more to do with who did what, being accurate with the facts, right? But the truth is, the whole truth, is that when you're being accurate, you're being accurate. So, pardon me if I cry here, if my husband comes home and he's super excited to tell me about stuff and I am just not ready to receive it because I had a day, um, to be accurate in my speech, I need to tell him. Instead of being like, Ugh. he just comes in talking, blah, 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 and I try to take it, but I don't got no room for it. I don't got no, I don't have any room for it. So then I bubble over and I'm upset. You're never there for me. And then he's confused and shocked and be like, wait, what are you talking about? I'm always there for you. I'm here right now, you know? And Anyway, then it just spirals out of control. But to be accurate, to, to tell him, hey. I called my mom again today and it took two rings before I remembered. Or whatever's going on in your life. And I got it together because we had a project going on and I, I was just excited to share it. Anyway. Um, and I got it together, and I finished the day with the kids, but the second you got home, I just want to go deal with this. So can you just give me like two minutes alone? I want to hear about your day. I just need a minute to myself, like 100%. Nobody touching me, nobody needing me, nobody wanting me. Can you do that? Okay, and he always can. So then I can go compose myself, cry real, real good cry. He can do that in two to five minutes. And uh, say my little prayer and remind God that I love him and I trust him and I don't like his plan but nobody said I had to and then I go back and I deal with my husband 
So take a deep breath. For one, it gives you that diaphragmic oxygenating thing that boosts your immune system, resets your adrenals, like improves digestion, makes you calmer and more relaxed, more sane. <laughs> and it helps you to formulate how to be accurate in your speech about where you are. To not take offense. To remember that you love them too. And to choose to be excited that they're excited and want to share with you. That's a pretty big deal. So, I don't know where you are in your relationship. I say married because when you got a vow standing between you two, it makes you, should make you, be more intentional. But we don't tend to, do we? Anyway, I have no idea how to put this on, so... This is Lori Kilpatrick signing out for SITFAC. Thank you for settling in for a chat with me, and I'll just end with a prayer. Lord, we lift up marriages to you. We thank you for putting them, for the safety of them, for the companionship of them, and for all of the beautiful, good things of marriage. And Lord, we thank you also for these rough bits that help us to grow closer together and closer to you, to be more complete human beings for sticking it out, even if we don't do it right the first 152 times. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you for mercy and for grace and for our, our, our wonderful spouses. May we choose to remember the good and choose to let go of the not so greats. In your beautiful and precious name we pray. Amen.